U.S. Highway 99, a concrete ribbon of commerce winding its way over the hills from San Francisco to Los Angeles. In the dark hours of the morning, a steady stream of trucks roars along this road. Huge six-wheel monsters, their headlights burning into the blackness, their mighty tires pounding the concrete hour after hour, mile after mile. At intervals in the night, bright neon lights mark the resting places. Cafes for the weary drivers and service stations for the trucks. In one of these stations, a truck has just been tanked up. The driver stands quietly by, watching the attendant check the tires. Hey, Paul, what are you doing here? I got blisters waiting. I grabbed a hitch into Lansdale and promoted a second-hand wheel. Well, how'd you make out with Williams? I'm still waiting for the dough. What'll it be, mister? Coffee. Why do we stay in this racket, Joe? We'll never make enough out of it to buy ourselves decent coffin. Oh, stop crabbing. I got enough worries. Sweep that coffee down. We got to get rolling. Anything else? No, I don't want... Oh, hello. Hello. Anything else? Say, you're pretty. Yeah? How about a nice piece of pie? Oh, don't get me wrong, sister. All you make me think of is how much I'd like to be with my wife. Well, I never heard that one before. Yeah, my brother's married, but, but not me. I ain't even engaged. That ain't hard to understand. How's about that coffee? Coming up. Cute, huh? Come on, let's beat it. Hiya, Joe. Oh, hello, Dawson. Wish we had time to chew the fat with you, but we got a roll. We just had a little trouble. Yeah, Williams told me. Williams? Yeah, he, uh, he sent me up here to pick up your load. What? Why, that dirty muzzler. After carrying the load all this way, we won't get a dime out of it. What if we don't give it to you? Shut up, Paul. You're a nice guy, Dawson. Why do you pull stuff like this? It ain't my fault, Joe. I got a wife and a kid. I got to do what Williams says or don't get any hauls. Now, don't be sore at me, fellas. I'd like to bust that chisel in the nose. Button up, Paul. That don't get you nothing. Come on, our rig's about two miles down. Where do we go from there, Joe? I think maybe we better run back to Frisco. Yeah, I think maybe I'll slap Williams in the teeth. Wait a minute, Fabrizio. Wait a minute, nothing. You owe us 300 bucks, Chisel, and you're going to pay it now. But, Joe... And if you don't, I'll take it right out of your hide. All right, all right, now. Don't get hot. I'll pay you. Oh, that's better. But you fellas are going to regret this. Here's your money. And I don't mind telling you you've had your last load out of this office. Then in that case, we ain't got anything to lose, have we? Watch the birdie, Williams. Oh. Bad curve sitting up ahead. There'll be a layer of mud on it. Be careful. Oh, go to sleep, will you? I'm driving now. Oh, I was just reminding you. If we go over a cliff, wake me up. Hey, pour on the brakes. What's the matter? Somebody wants a lift. Listen, Joe, if we pick up everyone we see on the road, we won't get home until next week. Oh, it's a dame. Hurry up, sister. Why, it won't hurt us to give her a lift. So she bumps her head on the door and sues us. It's too bad one of them hotshot passenger cars can't find time to stop. Come on, sister. Oh, thanks. Gee, I was beginning to wonder if I'd ever get a ride. Well, you got one now, so relax. Hey, ain't you the dame who was slinging hash at Barney's? That's me. Well, what happened? I quit. Yeah? Why? Well, I think Barney's taking wrestling lessons. I thought I ought to beat it before it gets to the half Nelson. I get it. How far are you going? How far are you going? L.A.? Well, that's good enough for me. I'd just as soon be out of a job one place as another. Well, that's the way to feel. Well, what's your name? Cassie Hartley. Know anyone in L.A.? Nope. What are you going to do? Oh, find a room, look for work. Oh, jobs ain't growing on bushes anymore. How much money you got? Oh, enough to get by. When do we make L.A.? Early tomorrow morning. You been on the road long? Ten days. Ten days? Gee, I guess you got to have your brains knocked out to be a truck driver. Mm, you don't have to, but it helps. Hey, hey, what are you flashing your headlights for? Truck up ahead of us. That means we want to pass. If it's clear ahead, he'll wink his lights back. Well, I don't see him winking. Well, that's funny. It looks clear to me. Try him again, Paul. Yeah. Say... Ain't that Harry McNamara's rig? Yeah, it looks right. like it. When I met him in Barney's, he was bleary-eyed. He's all over the road now. Look at him. Pull up alongside of him, Paul. That guy's asleep at the wheel. Well, blow your horn. Oh, not unless we have to. He might come to and take his rig right off the road. Watch out he don't dive into us, Paul. He's going off the road. Harry! Look out! Harry! Harry! <whistles> Pull up, Paul. They turned over. They turned over. Get the fire extinguisher quick. They're cooking in there. <laughs> We could have cut him off. If I'd have been fast, it wouldn't have happened. Oh, now, take it easy, Paul. Take it easy. Why should I take it easy? 
That's the way we're going to end up someday if we keep on. Well, I ain't keeping on. I don't have to kill myself. They got jobs in this country where a man don't have to die. I got a nice white bed, too. And I'm going to get in it before it's too late. Go on back to the truck, Paul. I'll take care of everything here. There's Pearl, fella. She must have been waiting up. Yeah. Hello, Paul. You're late, darling. I'm here anyway. That's something, ain't it? Paul, what's the matter? Hiya, Pearl. Oh, oh, hello, Joe. Come on, get out of there. I'll put on some coffee and... Oh. Well, Pearl, uh, this is Cassie Hartley. This is Pearl, my sister-in-law. Hello. Pleased to know you. Come on, Joe. It's cold out here. Oh, can't stop this trip, Pearl. I'll just about make the market now. Catch you on the way back. What's the matter with Paul? Oh, he's just a little nervous. He'll be okay after a night's sleep. Tell him I'll pick him up sometime tomorrow. I'll phone him when I'm leaving L.A. All right. Be careful. I can't figure you guys out. If you took care of your truck like you take care of yourselves, it'd fall apart in two weeks. Yeah? But we're tougher than any truck that ever came off an assembly line. Yeah. I'll bet your friend Harry thought the same thing. Forget about Harry, will you? He was probably so tired he thought the whole thing was a dream. How much money you got? Come on, how much? A dollar and 12 cents. Hmm. That's what I thought. Not even enough to rent a room. Oh, I'll get along. How? A guy can walk around nights without a place to sleep, but a dame hasn't got a chance. Well, as soon as I dump this load, I'll give you a room. Listen, you don't have to do that. I'm grateful just for the ride. You've been awful nice. Well, if I let you go, I keep worrying and wondering what happened to you. And I got enough worries the way it is. Well, I'd be pretty dumb if I didn't say yes. Where am I being dumb anyway? You can figure that out later. But I ain't used to taking new rumors at four in the morning. Well, it's never too late to start. Some of the best people check in at four in the morning. I wouldn't know about that. I never see any of them. Well, anyway, you got a bed for a week. Yeah, that'll give me enough time to find something to do. I'll pay you back. You know, I'm really worried about that. I got it all doped out how to go to the cops if you don't. So long, Red. Oh, wait. You, you've you been swell to oh, me. Oh, cut it. Well, I guess it's all right. If you want to kiss me goodbye. Sure, why not? Say. Goodbye. Don't fall asleep on the road. I won't, not after a pepper up like that. And don't practice that on anyone else. Save it for me. I will. But hurry back. You bet I will. Hey, you get that truck out of here. This space is only for Carlson's trucks. That's who I came to see, Carlson. And I'm parking here till I see him. Now listen, buddy. Get that broken down tub out of here or I'll park one on your chin. Oh, I ain't so sure of that. Well, maybe this will show you. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. see what this is all about. Hey. Hey, what's going on down there? Hey. Hey! Ed, Ed, come away from the window. Look, Marie, it's a fight. One of them is Joe Fabrini. Fabrini? Yeah. You remember Joe, don't you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Joe shouldn't be fighting on the street like that. <laughs> Boy, did he slap him that time. Smack him again, Joe. Shoot for his button. Come on. Come Ed, on. Ed, stop yelling out the huh? window. You're not a truck driver anymore. Oh, baby, can I help it if I get excited? When we got married, you promised to act like a gentleman. It's disgusting to see the head of a big company making more noise than any of his drivers. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Hey, cut it out. Cut it out down there, do you hear me? Cut it out! Hey, Joe. Joe Fabrini. Yeah. Come on up here, champ, and see what you can do with a good man. Okay. <laughs> Is he coming up? <laughs> yeah. Great guy. Now, where were we, Marie? You were making out a check for me. Oh, yeah. Hey, what do you do with all the money, Marie? That's 200 this week. Would you like me to give you an itemized account, penny by penny? Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute, baby. You, you use as much as you want. <laughs> You look like a million, you gotta spend a million, huh? What is it? Joe Fabrini to see you. Well, shoot him in. Hi, Ed. Come on in, Joe. <laughs> Who do you think you are, Jack Dempsey? <laughs> what was the beef down there? Nothing much. Some guy talked when he should have been listening. Oh, hello, Mrs. Carlson. Hello, Joe. Where you been hiding, Joe? Why don't you ever come up to see a guy? Oh, I've been pretty busy. Have a drink. Hey, 
Hey, the mice must have been in this bottle. <laughs> that was no mice. That was a rat. Huh? <laughs> very funny, baby. Very funny. <laughs> she gets off good ones like that all the time, Joe. Come on, let's have one on the house, huh? Sorry, Ed. You know I never touch it. Well, okay. I'll have one for both of us, huh? Your liver must look like a bomb hit it. Well, I always say, live and let liver. You get it? <laughs> you think a fast one's like that after you've been married to a smart girl like Marie for seven years? If I thought I was responsible for anything like that, I'd hang myself. <laughs> you see what I mean, Joe? Right on the trigger every minute. <laughs> Sit down, Joe. I want to talk to you. Thanks. Joe, why don't you stop trying to beat the wildcat game and go to work for me, huh? You beat it, didn't you? Yeah, but I had an old uncle who was nice enough to kick off and leave me 20 grand. Look, Joe, I'm just getting in five new diesels. I'd like to have you and Paul on one of them. Thanks, Ed, but I still like to be my own boss. Buying my own products, I won't have to take anything from anyone. I think you should listen to Ed. He's talking sense for once. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Carlson. I probably sound like I don't appreciate his offer. I do. But I still want to try it my way. Just a few drinks, and maybe I'll be hiring Ed. Hmm? Oh, sure. And I'd haul for you, too. <laughs> Say, you know where you can buy any loads? Oh, I ain't looked yet into it. I thought you might know. Oh, well, sure. I know just the guy. And as long as I'm going to be working for you someday, I better start getting on the good side of you, huh, Joe? <laughs> yeah, and you'd better be nice to him, too, Marie. I'm always nice to your friends. Oh, yeah? <laughs> be back in a minute. Well... Well, what? Where were you last Thursday? On the road, I guess. You're lying. You were here in town. One of the boys saw you. So I was in town. I waited in front of that restaurant so long they thought I was a picket. Don't you ever keep a date. I didn't make a date. You did. I told you I wouldn't be there, and I'll tell you now. I'll never be there. Why? What's the matter with me? Nothing, except you got a husband, Mrs. Carlson, and he happens to be a friend of mine. Understand? Oh, now, Joe. Cut it out, Marie. Is there any harm in a kiss? Sometimes, yeah. Now lay off. You know, one of these days, Ed's going to catch you, and when he does, he'll <laughs> slap your ears off. <laughs> He'd never believe it. He could see it, and I could still convince him it wasn't so. A lot of dames think that, and they all end up behind the eight ball. You know, I wonder what I see in you. You're crude, you're uneducated, you never had a pair of pants with a crease in them. And yet, I can't get you off my mind, Joe. Well, you're not on my mind, so forget it. Hey, Aunt Joe, I wrote it down. The United Warehouse in Pomona asked for Oscar Drake. He's got a floor load of cut lemons he wants to get rid of. Well, that ain't bad. Uh, okay, Ed, I'm in business. You better beat it. He's in a hurry. Hey, wait a minute. You got any dough? Oh, enough for a load. Thanks, Ed. I, I won't forget this. Well, that's all right. Goodbye, Mrs. Carlson. Goodbye. It was nice to see you again, Joe. Keep your eye on that white line. You betcha. And I'll watch all the curves, too. So long, Joe. You know, if anyone can beat that wildcat racket, he can He's a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny how all the dames used to go for him. Hey, Marie. Hmm? I was talking about Joe. I said it's funny how all the dames used to go for him. Did they? I can't understand it. You're watching They Drive by Night, starring George Raff, Lana Turner, and Lucille Ball on Radio Movie Classics. We'll have more after these messages. The 60 Greatest Old-Time Radio Shows, starring Frank Sinatra and Friends. Radio Spirits presents a collection of 60 rare radio episodes guest starring Frank Sinatra. Here's Sinatra on Suspense, Jack Benny, Rocky Fortune, and the Lux Radio Theater, to name only a few. You'll also receive a 64-page booklet with photographs and show histories. Order now and save $20 off the $59.98 catalog price. Pay just $39.98 during this limited-time offer. Call now, 1-800-RADIO-48. That's 1-800-723-4644. Four eight or order online at mediabay.com. We now return to They Drive by Night, starring George Raft, Lana Turner, and Lucille Ball on Radio Movie Classics. Night after night, Joe Fabrini and Paul pound the highway north and south. They're both haggard and worn, but business has been good, and they're glad to be working. In an all-night cafe along the road, Joe has just put in a long-distance call to Los Angeles. Hello? 
Hello, Cassie. Joe. Joe, is that you? How are you? Oh, Joe, did something happen to you? You weren't in an accident. Nah, nothing's happened. What took you so long to get to the phone? Oh, I was scared when they told me it was long distance. I knew it was you or, or about you. How did you know? Oh, I just knew. Is everything all right? Oh, everything's great. We got more dough than we ever seen before. Say, uh, this is a funny time to call up a girl, ain't it? Oh, I don't mind. I'm glad you called. I was worried about you. Were you? Yeah. Did you think about me? Oh, sure. Every minute. Gee, this is beginning to look like love at first sight. Do you believe in that? Well, it saves a lot of time. When are you coming back, Joe? You anxious? Oh, what do you think? I think I want to get back there and see you as fast as we can buy another load. Oh, but be careful. Don't drive too fast. I want to see you quick, but I want to see you all in one piece. You will. I nearly we always go around that way. Your three minutes are up. Deposit 50 cents, please. Oh, don't spend any more, Joe. We can talk all we want free when you get in town. Okay, honey. Good night. Good night, Joe. Uh, that was great talk, Joe. Pearl and me used to have them silly conversations before we got married. Who said anything about getting married? Nobody. But you can't horse me. I know that race when I see it. It just depends on how smart the dame is. Ah, your brakes are dragging. Come on, let's hit the road. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, nothing, but you got to take the wheel for a while. Huh? I'm knocked out. Well, let me alone, will you? I just got to sleep. You got to sleep three hours ago. Uh, don't seem like three seconds. Now, why don't we pull up here and both nail a couple hours shut eye? Mm, what a guy. We get a little ahead of this racket for the first time in our lives, and you want to stop and sleep. Yeah, I want to sleep. Everyone sleeps in, once in a while, remember? You think I want to do something peculiar? It'd be peculiar to stop now, all right. What do you want to do, get into L.A. after the market is flooded with pairs? If we want to get a price, we've got to get them here early. All right, all right. Slide over. Thanks, kid. And keep your eye on that white line. If it begins to wobble, wake me up. Yeah. Uh, you know what I always do when I feel the Sandman coming? No. Yeah. I begin to count to myself. Out loud. I got to 10,000 last night. Not even one mistake. Try it sometime. Yeah. going to be okay, Pearl. We got him to the hospital here inside of an hour. Oh. He's busted up a little, but the doc says he'll be okay. What about you, Joe? Oh, just a couple of scratches. I guess my name wasn't up. Which is his room? Right over there. Well, it was my fault, Pearl. He wanted to stop and sleep, and I made him dry. Don't blame yourself, Joe. It was bound to happen sooner or later. I'm grateful he's alive. Truck's gone, I suppose. Complete wreck. Load smashed. Not a cent of insurance. Oh. We were just starting to do pretty good, too. It's always that way, isn't it, Joe? Oh, you and Paul get another truck and you'll be on the road again. No, not for a while. I'm going to go to work for Ed Carlson. Carlson? Yeah, he always wanted to give me a job, and, well, I'm, I'm taking it. You see... Joe, I want to see Paul. Now, wait, Pearl. Uh, he's going to be out of work for some time. Huh? But I don't want you to worry, see? Well, 
While he's getting well, I, I'll take care of everything. What are you trying to do, Joe? Soften the blow? How bad is he? Oh, he looks all right. A couple of cuts here and there, all except his right arm, they thought. Well, uh, they had to do it. They, they had to take it off. I'm going to surprise you, Joe. I'm going to surprise you a lot. I'm almost glad it happened. You know what? You heard me. I'm almost glad. Now he can't drive a truck. Now he'll be home nights. And I won't, I won't always be alone worrying. Maybe it's worth a right arm, Joe. Maybe it's worth it. Charlie, how's that transmission coming? Okay, Joe. She'll roll tonight. Well, keep it coming. Hey, Iris. Yeah, Joe. Have to get number eight ready to pick up that beer at Lone at Red Star. Switch 14 to the furniture hall. Right. And if anybody wants me, I'll be in the office. Hello, Joe. Oh, uh, how are you, Mrs. Carlson? How do you like your new job? Mm, it's okay. Anything I can do for you? I just came in to see Ed. Oh, uh, ain't he in his office? I haven't looked yet. Oh. Did, uh... Ed tell you about our anniversary party tomorrow night? Yeah, but I can't make it. Oh, Ed's counting on having you. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Carlson. Hey, hiya, Marie. Give us a kiss. Huh? Oh, please, Ed. Every time all I... All right, all right. Now, don't get sore. Ed, Joe says he can't make our party tomorrow night. What? Boy, sure he can. It's at our new house, Joe. I want you to see it. Oh, I had something planned with Paul for tomorrow night. Now, look. I'm the boss. This is a royal command. Show up tomorrow night at my new dump. Paul don't pay your salary. I do. Okay. I'll show up, but I gotta leave early. I knew Ed could bring you around. I guess he has more sex appeal than I have. Hmm? <laughs> Ain't she terrific? If you open your mouth, she puts her foot in it. <laughs> I gotta get back to the garage. Uh, so long, Mrs. Carlson. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Ed. So long, Joe. <laughs> yeah, you know, Joe sure has turned out great. You know, your idea of taking him off the trucks and putting him inside was strictly okay. He's a good man. Yes, I'm sure he will be. Yeah, Joe's plenty fast on new ideas. I'm going to let him try out a few of them. Then I'll have a lot more time to spend with you. You aren't talking much, Joe. Huh? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Red. Uh, how are things going down at the store? Oh, all right. My feet hold out. Well, thanks for walking me home. Good night. Oh, Cassie. What? Wait a minute. Cassie, what do you say we get married? Oh, Joe. What do you say? Well, I'd like that fine, but we can't. Why not? Well, you've got enough responsibilities without taking me on. After Paul finds something, all right. Oh, Paul ain't gonna find anything. Why, why kid ourselves? Well, it don't hurt to hope. You've always been an optimistic guy. What's the matter with you? I guess maybe I'm just finding out the score. Oh, Joe, that don't sound like you. Will you do something? Will you take me dancing tomorrow night when we both feel better? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I can't. I got to go to the boss's house to a party. Oh. Don't say, oh, like you think I'm ducking out on you. I didn't want to go. Ed and his wife muscled me into it. Well, you don't have to explain to me where you're going or why. And don't pull that aching heart routine on me. Oh, Joe, let's say goodnight. If we stay out here, we'll only be fighting. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. I'm kind of... Oh, I don't know. I know, though. You're upset about Paul. But don't worry, Joe. It'll work out. It'll be fine. I know it will. Kiss me, Joe. Cassie, you're the only girl in the world I've ever been crazy about. Joe, you're the only fellow in the world who can make me believe a lie like that. <laughs> yes, sir, that's what I always tell my drivers. No telephone pole ever hits a truck except in self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> have some champagne, folks. Huh? Ed, Come on. Ed, we have servants to open the wine. Oh, what's the point of drinking champagne if you can't buff the cork yourself? Huh? Hey, hey, there's Joe. Oh, I'll take care of Joe. Huh? You All stay right. here with your friends. Oh, hello, Joe. You're late. Yeah, I got stuck at the office. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you we were dressing. Oh, it wouldn't have done any good. I don't own a tux. Hey! Hiya, Joe. Have a little champagne, huh? Thanks, Ed. You know I don't drink. Well, neither do I, unless I got a glass in my hand. <laughs> you don't have any bad habits, do you, Joe? <laughs> None I can't handle, Mrs. Carlson. <laughs> That's what I said. I told him, didn't I? <laughs> 
good night, Ed. I had a nice time. <laughs> Why? Oh, wait a minute. You're not leaving already, Joe. Yeah, I'm due at the office at 6.30. Uh, good night. Well, good night. Good night, Mrs. Carlson. Oh, I'll, I'll walk out to your car with you. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, it's all right. I, I could stand a breath of air. Oh, it's cold. Uh, you better run back in. It feels good. Well, uh, I had a nice time, Mrs. Carlson. Joe, do you have to call me Mrs. Carlson? I have a first name, you know. Well, when I call you Mrs. Carlson, that keeps me in my place. You wouldn't be trying to get over that it also keeps me in my place now, would you? Mm, that ain't what I said. Well, I'm good at reading between the lines. What's the matter with you, anyway? Mm, I feel okay. Well, then, what's the matter with me? I know a dozen men who come running if I even winked at them. Then wink at one of them and leave me alone. I've told you 50 times I'm doing good at the office and I'm not going to stick my neck out fooling around with the boss's wife. Particularly when I happen to like the boss. How touching. The faithful employee, the devoted friend. That's me. Good night. Oh, Joe, you don't have to get sore. Hey, Marie, we're all going over to the Tango Club. Get into your funny sack, honey. We're stepping out. Yeah, the Tango Club. He'd be lucky if he can walk in the door, let alone tango. Don't you worry about Ed. He's okay. Sure, sure. Ed's fine. When you don't have to look at him every day and listen to his gags. You know, Joe, it's too bad I had to meet Ed first. Yeah? I mean, before I met you. Yeah? If I wasn't married to him, maybe you'd liven up a bit, huh? I doubt it. I don't. Anyway, you're Mrs. Carlson. Yeah. Ain't I the lucky one? Good night, Mrs. Carlson. Mrs. Carlson. Mrs. Mrs. Ed, Ed, you hear me? We're home. Mm -hmm. You fell all over the tangle club, and now you're falling all over me. Get out and walk. I can't carry you into the house. Oh, you just go ahead, honey. I'll catch a little snooze here in the garage. Ed, wake up. You can't sleep in the garage. Get up, will you? Huh? Run along, baby. I'll be right in. Just turn off motor. Mustn't let motor run. Uh, just turn off motor. Ed, wake up. Oh, how cold. Oh, it'll leave you here for good. Oh, let the motor run and wash you out, you. Why not? No. Sure, why not? Carbon monoxide poison. Suicide. Who'd worry about him? No. Not you. What good is he to you? What good is he to anybody? Go on, just walk out with him. Close the door after you. Go on. Why not? Why not? Why not? That's right. Close the door. Close it tight. Go on. Go on, close it. Now go in the house. Suicide, that's all. Suicide. Suicide. And then I went in the garage. And I found him in the car. He was dead. Try to be calm, please, Mrs. Carlson. I'm not questioning you. This is just a formality that the police must observe. He was so drunk. Naturally, I couldn't get such a heavy man out of the car. He'd stayed in the garage before, but he always came into the house when he sobered up. This time Don't he... distress yourself, Mrs. Carlson. <laughs> just take your time. This time he must have awakened. Still drunk. And he must have started the car and... Oh, it was awful. He wanted so much to live. He had everything to live for. Thank you, Mrs. Carlson. I'm sorry I was forced to question you. I won't bother you any further. You've been very kind. But what's going to happen now? Nothing. Your husband's death was accidental. Carbon monoxide poisoning. We'll just consider the case closed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's pause right here. We'll return to They Drive by Night, starring George Raft, Lana Turner, and Lucille Ball after these messages. Dimension. 
George Burns and Gracie Allen. Hop along, Cassidy. Edgar Bergen. The Shadow. John and Blanche Bickerson. The Whistler. Choose from among thousands of downloadable old-time radio shows and spoken word titles at MediaBay.com. The best voice on the net. Yeah. <laughs> Now for the conclusion of They Drive by Night, starring George Raff, Lana Turner, and Lucille Ball on Radio Movie Classics. A few weeks have passed. With Ed Carlson's death preying on our mind, Marie's brittle poise has disappeared. She's restless, jumpy. Her face is drawn, her eyes haunted. Alone in her living room, she stares out of the window toward the garage. Behind her, a maid comes quietly into the room. Mrs. Carlson? <gasps> oh, did I frighten you? Stop creeping around the house. Oh, I wasn't creeping, ma'am. I, I don't want I... you sneaking around you here. I wasn't doing no sneaking. I was just... So get out of here. Get out of my sight. But Mr. Fabrini is here, ma'am. Joe? Come in, Joe. Hello, Mrs. Carlson. Get out, Anna. Yes, ma'am. You were supposed to be here at 10 o'clock, Joe. One of our drivers crashed into a load of pipes. I don't care about that. The driver don't either. He's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't pay any attention to me, Joe. I'm jumpy. Alone in this big house, it gives me the willies. You want a drink? No, thanks. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Sit down, Joe. What's this business you wanted to see me about? Look... I don't know anything about that company. It only confuses me. I've tried to understand. The lawyers have been explaining things to me, but the more they talk, the less I know. I can't run a trucking business by myself, Joe. I need someone to help me. Does that mean me? Yes. Ed had a lot of confidence in you. He said you had good ideas. I know he'd want you to be my partner. Partner? Yes. 50-50 and everything. I had the papers all drawn up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's wrong, Joe? Don't you want to own half a big trucking business? With anyone else, I think this was a great idea. But you? I don't know. Look, Joe, it's good for me because if I don't get someone to run the company, I'm going to end up losing it. It's good for you because you'll never get a chance like this again. No interference? None. I promise you, Joe. I don't know anything about trucks. How could I interfere? I wasn't talking about trucks. Oh, you have to help me, Joe. I haven't anyone else to turn to. Please. What's it going to be? If it's going to be like you say, you can count me in. Oh, that's well. Here's to our partnership, Joe. May it be a long and happy one. Get them rolling, Irish. Okay, Joe. Good evening, Joe. Oh, hello, uh... On in the office. These are new trucks you were telling me about? Yeah. Oh, I see you got a couple new things yourself. Hey, that's a pretty snappy-looking outfit. You like it? I didn't think you'd notice. It's not too soon for me to stop wearing black, is it? No, I don't think so. Well, that's the way I felt. I needed some pepping up. So I went out yesterday and bought a whole closet full of clothes and shoes. Joe, you're not going to see me twice in the same outfit for months. I got six new... Ex- Hello, Joe. Oh. Oh, hiya, honey. Uh, got a kiss for me? Well, why not? Maybe I'm in the way here. Oh, uh, Cassie, this is Mrs. Carlson. Mrs. Carlson, Miss Hartley. I'm glad to know you. Yes? Oh, well, uh, if you're talking business, I can wait outside. Oh, don't go. Uh, Mrs. Carlson, uh, Cassie and I were going out for a quick dinner. Would you like to come along? No. No, thank you. I... I don't... Joe, catch her! Oh, she passed right out. Get some water, Cassie. Oh, we better get her to a doctor. Yeah. <gasps> Uh, Mrs. Carlson, we're going to take you to a doctor. No. No, take me home, Joe. Well, don't you think it would be better? No, take me home. Okay, okay, relax. Uh, it's all right, Mrs. Carlson. We'll take you home. Are you feeling any better? I'm all right. I'll run the car in the garage for you. The garage? No, stop. Let me out. Stop it, Joe. What? Do you hear? Stop. Let me out. What's the matter with you? You're going crazy? Let me out. Please, let me out! Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, let me out! Let me out, Joe! Let me out! Sit down, Joe. I'm sorry about last night. I guess my nerves just collapsed. 
Well, you ought to go wait for a while, get a change. You've been hanging around that house too much. Yeah. Maybe I will. Your friend, Miss Hartley, is very nice. Known her long. Quite a while. Did you have a nice time after you left me? It was all right. Well, you must apologize to Miss Hartley for me. Oh, she didn't think anything of it. Joe, how about some dinner? I ate. Well, you could sit with me. Mm, can't do it. i got to get out some estimates. Figures on those new trucks. Oh, I know, I know. Well, you can do that tomorrow morning. Oh, i got other things to do in the morning. This is important. It's the only time I have to do it. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm a fine partner, trying to pull you away from your work. Joe, Frank Connor and his wife are throwing a party at the Grove Friday night. They asked me to bring you along. Sorry, I can't make it. Can't make it. Can't make it. That's all I ever hear from you. It used to be because my husband was your friend. But he's dead now. He's been dead for months. What's wrong with me now? Why can't you make it? I'm getting married Friday. Is that a good enough reason? Married? That's right. You getting married? To that redhead? That's her. Any objections? Yes, I've got objections. Why do you think you can make a sucker out of me? Oh, relax now. Take it easy. Shut up! If it weren't for me, you'd still be kicking trucks up and down the coast. I get Eddie to take you off the road. I put that clean collar around your dirty neck, and I put those creases in your pants. I'm the one who's put that money in your pocket. What makes you think you can walk out on me? I came in here on a business deal, and I've done all right for you as well as myself. Oh, don't talk like a fool. I walked you right into a company that was set and established. I gave you Ed's insurance money to buy new trucks. I could have taken anyone off the street who could add two and two, and they'd done just as well or better. Well, any time you don't like our setup, I can always check out. You're not getting out! You belong to me, and you're going to stay with me! If you don't like it now, you'll learn to like it. You're not going off marrying that cheap, chiseling redhead. Look, I'm marrying Cassie, and I'm not asking anyone what they think about it. That includes you. She hasn't any right to you. You're mine, and I'm holding on to you. I committed murder to get you. Murder, do you understand? You what? Sure. I killed Ed. I kill him to get you because you're always throwing him in my face. Yes, Mrs. Carlson. No, Mrs. Carlson. Good night, Mrs. Carlson. You made me do it. You, you understand. I didn't want to kill anyone. But you made me murder Ed, your friend. You killed Ed? Why, it even makes me sick to look at you. Where are you going? I'm getting out. I don't want to ever see you again. Oh, Joe, Joe, don't go. Keep away from me. I said. Keep away me. I said and stay away. Honest, Joe, I didn't mean what I said. I was jealous. I didn't know what I was talking about, Joe. I didn't kill Ed. I didn't kill him. It was well, just an accident. you that record for someone else. You may need it. Oh, Joe, please. Please, I'll be a good sport. Marry your girl. I, I hope you're happy with her, but please. Please don't leave me, Joe. Don't go. Don't go. I didn't want to kill anyone. I didn't want to. He made me do it. I didn't want to kill anyone. Yes, he made me do it. He made me kill him. He made me. He made me do it. Hello, operator. I want to speak to the district attorney. The district attorney! Go ahead, Mrs. Carlson. He made me kill him. He said he'd kill me if I didn't. I didn't want to do it, but I was afraid of him. I had to do it. Joe wanted the insurance money. He wanted to have everything for himself. In other words, you were coerced by Fabrini into murdering your husband. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's it. He made me do it. Hello, Boyle. Pick up Joseph Fabrini at the Carlson Trucking Company. The charge is murder. Hello, Cassie. Oh, Joe. Joe. Oh, relax, kid. How are you, Paul? Hello, fella. Five minutes, Joe. Thanks. Well, Cassie, are you surprised as I am to find me here? No. I always knew you were a bad guy. You look tired. Didn't they let you sleep? Oh, I guess I just need a shave. You look a little worn yourself. Oh, Joe. Joe, how are you going to get out of this? Well, aren't you going to ask me whether I did it or not? Oh, stop horsing around. We know you didn't do it, but the jury's going to be tougher. The partnership, the insurance dough. The poor, helpless dame in your clutches. And what would be her motive turning you in if you ain't guilty? Oh, that's easy. She saw because I told her I was going to marry Cassie. She didn't have any right to be. I never even once called her by her first name. You believe that, don't you? I believe it, Joe. Well, that brings us to the jury again. They'll take one look at that dame, put themselves in your shoes, and call you a liar. Say, whose side are you on? I'm just telling you what you're going to hear in the courtroom. I'm going to see Mrs. Carlson. No, you're not. You stay away from that dame or she'll hang something on you, too. Yes, and she'll see me if I have to break into her cell with a sledgehammer. I thought 
you show up, what do you want? I want you to tell the truth. And what do you think the truth is? Joe had nothing to do with killing your husband. And what's more, he had nothing to do with you. Is that so? Is that so? Well, why do you think I took him into the business? Why did I give him my husband's insurance money to play around with? Because he had an honest face. Listen, you could talk to me from now on. And you'd never make me believe that Joe ever had anything to do with you. What makes you so sure of that? Because I love him. You love him. You don't know what it is to love a man. I'm the one who loves him, and I'll take him with me wherever I'm going. Oh, you're rottener than I thought anyone could be. I don't know what you feel for Joe, but it isn't love. Why don't you tell him what really happened? That Joe wouldn't have anything to do with you. Shut up! That you killed your husband because he was in the way. Get out of here! That you kept throwing yourself at Joe and he wouldn't look at Get it. out! Mason! Mason, get her out! Get her out! Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, you've heard the testimony of the witnesses. Is there any doubt left in your mind? Joe Fabrini, by reason of duress and threats, employed this woman as ruthlessly as ever a man employed a dagger or gun to commit for profit a brutal, cold-blooded murder. Now the state will call its final witness the woman herself, Marie Carlson. Oh, Marie Carlson. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, shall God. I, I, I do. State your name. Marie Carlson. Speak up, please. Marie Carlson. You were at the time of his death the legal wife of Edward Carlson? Yes. How long before the death of Edward Carlson were you acquainted with the defendant, Joe Fabrini? Two years. Where did you first meet him? I asked Mrs. Carlson where you first met the defendant. <laughs> Answer the question, please. <laughs> he was laughing all the time. He kissed me when he was drunk. <laughs> so I got a new car and a lot of new clothes. <laughs> he tells terrible jokes and then laughs at them. <laughs> and then I killed him. <laughs> he was drunk and I killed him. I killed him. <laughs> He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Your Honor, I move that this case be dismissed on the ground that the sole valid witness for the prosecution is obviously insane. <laughs> Joe Fabrini Freed. <laughs> well, I'm glad they spelled my name right. You know, sounds funny, but I can't help feeling sorry for that dame. Me too, in a way. What about the business, Joe? I'm giving my share to the boys. After what's happened, I need a change of scenery. And uh, what about us? We're getting married, just like we figured. I'll dig up a new truck, hit the road again, and be on top in no time. A truck? Oh, is this going to be an argument? No, Joe. That's what you want. I'm with you around every curve. That's the girl. Well, the boys are waiting in the garage. I'll tell them right now. And that's all there is to it, fellas. After everything that's happened, I don't feel I got the right to stay on here. So I'm giving you boys my share to split between you. And I'm bowing out. Hey, Joe, wait a second. We can't run this racket. If you quit, I'll be on relief in a week. Me too. Sure, Joe, I got four kids. We now, wait, you. listen. Joe. Give us a break. Oh, all right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Shut up. Shut up, will you, fellas? Listen. Fellas, I... I'm sure glad you feel this way, but... Well, I... I don't know what to say. What do you think, Cassie? Your mind's made up, Joe. Well, fellas, you heard the boss. I guess I'm sticking. <laughs>